Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another Ever More podcast. You're on your Cash United podcast live exclusively on the Slide Road Pass YouTube network. I'm your host, Chris. We've been decimated this week as the Premier League decided to give us a midweek fixture. So we've only got the three of us tonight. But what we lack in quality, we make, well, quantity, sorry, we make up for in quality. I nearly dropped my son out there, guys. <laughs> I've got the blue tick man, Dan Wales, is back with me. And I have got the wizard ones at the ready. The Welsh wizard is back. How are you, lads? Good, mate. How are you? All right, thank you. Good, good. You tied yourself up in knots there. I was all over the place. <laughs> Solid start. I was going to say, good start. It can only get better, as they say, mate, as exactly. they say. But yeah, we're going to get stuck in all things Newcastle United. We've had a fantastic week. We've all been bouncing about a great result, a fantastic performance by the lads. But just before we get started, a little bit of housekeeping. We're live on YouTube. So yeah, please join us in the comments, guys. We'd love to hear what you've got to say about the game and obviously the game tonight, which our blue tick man will be diving off to get to. So if he disappears abruptly, he'll be legging it for that pre-match pint before he gets stuck into it. But yeah, if you join us for the first time, thank you so much. We'd love to have you on board. And uh, please remember to click like and subscribe. Helps the channel grow. We're looking to get past the 200 subscriber mark. We're currently in about 187. So we are very, very... We can see you die, don't we? We can see you just above say, that. If you just want to cut my face out, just say, mate. You don't have to just cover me out like that. That's a bit, bit, As, a bit rude. Yeah. As Dai is the most handsome member of the podcast, yet again, you can see, please click like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking, Dai, I'm only joking, lads. But yeah, listen, let's get stuck right into it. We've had an absolutely fantastic week. And um, Leicester were outfoxed by the mighty magpies at St. James's Park. Dai, the Welsh Wizard, I'm glad to have you back, mate. I'm going to start with you. You probably watched the game on the TV, mate. How did you feel? How did you find, mate? Are we safe now? Is that us done? Oh, yeah, without question. I think we were safe before that. I think we were always going to pick up a, another couple of points here and there. So I was not, I was not really bothered about that. Um, it wasn't a kind of thrilling performance, I don't think, but it was just the thing we needed to do. And I think the way that Newcastle are playing at the minute, I think we're set up to be that way. I think we're set up to do a job uh, and, and be a threat on the break uh, when we can. And I think that kind of worked out perfectly. Um I don't know how you know how deep into this we want to go, but I will. I just wanted to say one thing about the the winning goal. Obviously, everyone's talking about Willock uh, and uh, Bruno, and rightly so. But I, I thought Target was outstanding in in that commitment. I think that typifies the team spirit that we've got at the minute. Where the last minute of the match, he could have let that run out for a goal kick, uh, and instead, his first thought was. We can do something here. You know, it doesn't matter what point of the game it is. There's always something available. Uh, and I thought that was really typified by what he did and how he kind of started that move off. So, yeah, fantastic three points. Really important. Climbing up the league. Um, yeah, the, the the future is looking bright. We're, 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 you know, we're second in the league since Christmas. One of the most pointless stats of all time. So, uh, I, you know, it just goes to show what a turnaround we've had. So, yeah, fantastic. Yes, keep, keep going the right direction. Absolutely. The future is brighter than Brendan Rodgers' teeth, and that's saying a lot, because we didn't see much of them at the game, did we? He's very, very sombre, was Brendan. As I was to say, guys, please join us in the comments let us know what you think. PK is off duty tonight. He's uh, in Sunny Bar Loco having a few, so thanks for tuning in, PK. You probably can't hear a word we're saying, because he's about eight Moretti's in probably by now. <laughs> and we've got some comments from Trolls. Nice to see you back, Trolls. Hey, Slide Rule Gang. Hi, all. And Bruno, Bruno, Bruno. What a hell of a thing to say. Well done, Trolls. We're kicking off right on board. So, Mr. Wales, you were in the game. I was at the game, actually, as well, which is a very rarity for me, mate. But you were in the game. I know you were on uh, camera duties afterwards, mate. Did you see Bruno's goal? Did you stay long enough to see it? You know what? I'll tell you the story. So, it it got... I hate leaving games early. <laughs> um, And I did actually see the goal, luckily. But I nearly didn't. So, what I, I got to about 92 and I... Nice like sort of in such a and I thought it doesn't look like we're going to get anything here. So I'd started, I'd walked down from my seat and I was on the um, the concourse in the east end. But what I normally do is I'll normally walk along the concourse like a bit further along. So obviously I'm going towards like the Gallagher end. So I walk along it and then I heard a bit of rumbling. So I went up a, another access sort of near t towards the strawberry corner, it's pretty much as far as I could go along. And I, I walk up those stairs and Willick was just getting into the box. And so I get to the top of the stairs and he gets into the box and he put and I see the goal go in and obviously bedlam ensues and it was fantastic. So yes, I did see the goal, not from where I normally would see it, but actually I got a really good view because I was pretty much right directly in front of it where I just happened to come out of the access. So brilliant. I mean, in terms of the overall game, as Dai says, not a brilliant game. I don't think either side were up to a lot, but I want to mention Emil Kraft because, I mean... He, he took an awful lot of stick in the past year or so, hasn't he, for below-par performances under the previous manager. And I think, you know, since Eddie Howe's come in, obviously, Kim Chippy was the first choice right back, but since he's been injured, Kraft's been preferred mostly over Mankio. 
And I think that's for good reason, because I think he's been absolutely phenomenal. I think it shows that there is a player there. I mean, I used to be a member of the Jacob Murphy fan club. I'm now a member of the Emil Kraft fan club. God, you flip-flop like everyone's business you've done, don't you? <laughs> I don't know what you're on about. No, but <laughs> I just thought like Kinder. Was... You like him, you don't like him. You like him, you don't like him. <laughs> I just thought he was really, really, really good. Um, and I, I, I mean, just he, he did his defensive work really well. He got forward as well. I think there was one point where he just, I can't remember who it was, but it was a lesser defender. It was Mark and he just, he just dropped his shoulder quickly and just went past him like he was. And that was like, this is not the Emil Kraft that I know. Who is this? Oh, almost the Swedish Cafu, as uh, as well, Mark has mischievously I, I, said in the comments there. As far as I, <laughs> as far as I know, Cafu has posters of Emil, Fran Emil uh, Kraft on his bedroom wall. Emil Franchi on his wall. Well, that is well, it. That is really, you're going to really, say there, wouldn't you? That's it. Maybe <laughs> Emil, that's, that's I mean, Emil, if you are watching, I mean, I'll see you later, buddy, to be fair for the fan cams, but perhaps if Cafu has pictures of them. I think Cafu just likes it and people <laughs> call him Emil, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> My wife had a picture of Emil Franchi on a wall, but I ripped it and threw it in the bin because I couldn't stand him staring at me. He's better looking than me, so I just said that. That's it. It's off. <laughs> Hi, Emil, if you're watching, mate. He's a oh, guy. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, He's a how great did you life. enjoy the game? Obviously, as someone who you, you said you've not been for a while, how did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was interesting for me because uh, I mean I I went with the the Lynch man James uh, who can't be here tonight because he's at the game because uh, his dad was recovering from a from a hip operation so get well soon Lynch senior um, so we went we went um, along it was great yeah the, the last game I went to because I don't go a lot of games as you guys know uh, obviously we, you know watch the castle all the time religiously but uh, I don't go to every single game. And um, the last one I went to was Spurs, actually, the Spurs game at home, the first oh, really? game of the new regime, and the Steve Bruce's last game, I believe, wasn't it? And um, it started off amazing. Obviously, War Flags had the displays up. Wilson scored that goal, and it was just limbs you know, everywhere. And it was it was almost, you, it was sitting there going, wow, this is incredible. I was looking around at the lads. We were on a stag do that was rearranged from being away. There was a cardboard cutout of Gail Platt going crazy in the crowd. It was amazing. It was a brilliant atmosphere. But then it turned very sour very quickly, as we all know got comfortably beat. Bruce was still in the dugout. Negative, negative, negative. The total opposite uh, this weekend, die. You know, obviously, war flags were there. We had Thomas on the show last week. Fantastic lad. You know, we, we saw him in the, in the boozer before the game as well. Um, great display. And that just increases that, you know, that atmosphere. It just intensifies it, electrifies it. But the positivity, even just walking to the ground in the bars before the game, you can just, you can smell it in the air. You know, you, you know that this is the new Newcastle United. And, it's no surprise that potentially tonight we could go six unbeaten at home, which is the first time since the great Sir Bobby Robson, you know, which tells you, you know, where this club is going, where Eddie Howe has got this this group of players. I, I, after second what Dan says, I mean, I've been a huge Emil Kraft critic as well, but he looks so steady. I couldn't believe the guy I was watching was the same player that I'd called horseshit for every single game I think he played previously. Um, but it was a scrappy game, lads. I agree with you guys. It was a bit bitty. Um, and there was one man who had the quality really to to, to grab it by the balls and that and win it for crap. us. Yeah, and that was a meal crap. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> of course, mate, of course. But no, we all know who we're talking about. And it was it, to be honest with you, even just watching him off the ball, his his movement, that radar, you could see he was looking at everything. It was almost like the Matrix. He was analysing stuff. Uh, Bruno, just you thought this guy is unbelievable. And you know, I, I don't know about you coming to you on this one, Dad. I don't know about you. That's the standard of player we need to bring in now, I think, to improve us as a squad. He's the kind of the gold standard, I think, isn't he, as to where we go now for new players. Yeah, I think so. I, I think, you know, we were we were messaging earlier about these sorts of things. I do think we need to be a little bit careful. And I just think, yeah, you're absolutely right. He's 100% the type of person, quality-wise, we need to be bringing in. But he's also the kind of person we need to be bringing in. He really cares about the club. He's saying all the right things. He says he wants to be a legend here. He's learned English super quickly. That's the sort of thing that we want from someone. I, and I do just think we've got to be careful, you know, some of the names that we're splashing about that we don't get too carried away by the name or whatever else. We focus on the important thing, which is how good they are, but also what kind of person they are, because I think we need to make sure that we get those right people in. Look at Everton. They've got, you know, it looks like a, a bunch of dickheads playing for them, to be perfectly <laughs> honest. And it doesn't matter how much money you spend or how good someone might be on paper. If, if they're not, a good lad and not kind of going to buy into the situation, it's not going to work. And I'd say the same for Man United as well. We could go and get, you know, splash out on Ronaldo if we want to do. But the bloke, you know, obviously aside from the, the rough week, he's a terrible week he's had. I don't, I, you know, he doesn't come across as a team player. So I, I think there's that, there's that element to it as well. So yes, we do need more people like him, but I also think we need to kind of 
be part of a gradual build and not just throwing money away on 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 people um who don't kind of fit exactly what we want to do and i think in the past we might have gone after someone because they were a good name or whatever but now i feel like we need to get someone who will fit the system and i feel like we need to get someone who's going to fit into the dressing room like it's obvious that trippier for example has so you're right we do need more people like him he, he was fantastic the other night but i think we've got to make sure that we have the you know more human beings like him as well rather than just um the football quality as well I couldn't agree more, mate, as well. I mean, you, you look at people like um, Dan Byrne as well, you know, when we signed him, a very unsexy signing, I suppose, in many people's yeah. eyes. But, I mean, Dan, what a ph- phenomenal player Dan Byrne has, has been for the club, coming in, giving that stability at the back. You know, I mean, he, he looks like he's been here for about 15 or 20 years, doesn't he? It's just what a player the guy is. I'm, every single time I watch him, he just he just makes me feel the ease that he's at the back. Yeah, I mean... He's just phenomenal, isn't he? I, I, I completely agree with what you're saying. I, I think it shows. I know Brighton won the last two, but you know when when he left Brighton, they suddenly went to pot a little bit defensively, and I think that does show. I think obviously he, he's he's massive. He gets called Big Dan Burn for a reason. He is six foot seven. I mean, if I was looking, if I was stood next to him, I think it would be like Ryan Fraser all over again. But um, for a for such a big lad, he's so composed and so elegant on the ball. Which is a real compliment because you know, like I, I hate to be sort of like stereotypical here, but you know you get a lot of like taller players and perhaps they're not as good on the ball, but he really is, and I think that's exactly what you need. I think in the modern day, you know, you want centre backs who can actually play football and don't just hoof, don't just get rid. But I, I just think, yeah, obviously, obviously he gets it. He's from up here. Um, he understands the club. He understands the passion. Being a supporter from day one, but. Yeah, it just him and Shah have built this partnership at the back and it's really, really working. We're not conceding, I mean, apart from, of course, the Tottenham game, we're not really conceding many goals. Uh, we look solid, we look secure, but of course, I think credit has to be given to, to Kraft and Target as well. I think just overall, defensively, I think, as, as much as we've improved attacking in an attacking sense, defensively, we've got much better as well, which I think is really, really important. Absolutely, mate. There's no doubt about that at all. And just a special mention before we move on, to uh, to talk about you know the the palace preview that we're going to get stuck into before you have to shoot off Dan for the game. Um, I think just a special mention of Willick. You, you know you talked about him before getting in there, getting in the byline, crossing the ball. We were screaming for him to come on. Me and James, and we were sitting in the crowd. We we're just saying we needed his energy, we needed his legs, and I think that's exactly what what he offered, didn't he? You know he he, he got that turn. I mean, go back to what Di said about Matty Target. You know I've I've already convinced myself probably after about twenty minutes of seeing Matty Target left back that he was the man. Um, you know, the, the the horrible memories of Matt Ritchie at left back are starting to disappear from my my memories. Um, you know, to see a player like that who can do that kind of thing is 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 definitely the kind of left back that we need at the club. But massive credit to Willick, uh, Dan. What what do you think about you know what performance he put on, mate, when he came in? I mean, of course he set the goal up, didn't he? So you know that that that's worth its weight in goal. To be honest, of course, you know a great ball from target, then to then beat. I think it was Tielemans who who he took it past. If I'm correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was Tilo. Was he skinned him? Yeah, yeah. He buried him. Eh? Left, sold him for the absolute pies. Um, said going at the tomato sauce, and then <laughs> he, um, and then of course you know he he got into the box and and put the ball in, and then it deflects onto Bruno's head, and it's bedlam. So yeah, I mean to be fair, I don't, I think he took his time getting into the game. He didn't make perhaps an immediate impact, but as I say, the fact that he set up the, the winning goal, that's all that really matters to me. So, well done to him. <laughs> I, I think I mean, the good thing about him as well, and it is showing the signs of what we want to become, is that we've got a squad, haven't we? Or starting to show signs of that. And, you know, we, someone, uh, Mike has said in the in the comments there, Trippier will be straight back in the team. Yeah, maybe he will. But if he's not, Emil Kraft's actually doing all right. And if he's not, then well, maybe Mankio might come in and do something. And in the same way that, we've rotated our midfield a little bit. Willock is the one who's dropped out uh, in terms of a starting lineup. Well, actually it, it shows the variation that we can, we can offer in different games, in different circumstances and being able to have someone like that who can come off the bench and make an impact, I, I think is, you know, showing the way we want to move forward. And I think, you know, you're talking about Dan Byrne there, you know, he's obviously been fantastic for us, but he's not going to be there forever. He's not a world-class defender as much as I like the lad. And I think this is the sort of incremental rise and incremental change that we need. I think if we're gonna if we're gonna continue to progress, um, 
and with with that means we have a squad. And you know, we were chatting again in our WhatsApp today, talking about is Willock going to be a, a twenty five million substitute? Maybe, but I think if we're going to progress, I think that's a really, really good thing. I think we need that. I think that's important that we have those sorts of players. So, yeah, I think you know you're, you're absolutely spot on. But I think it's it's what it's beginning to demonstrate will be uh, is just as big to me as as, as what it provided. Absolutely, you have got to have depth in your squad. I think if we are going to move forward, that you're hundred percent right. You know, and you know, I think I think nostalgia and sentiment has to has to disappear. But but moving swiftly on to the next subjects, I know uh, the blue tick man's got a dart off soon. He's he's licking his chops for that pre match pint. I can just see that at the top corner. So we're going to do the Palace preview. We normally do this the way around. Anyone who's been watching the show um, for the last few months, but uh, this time we're going to do it the other way around because Dan's got to shoot. So Palace preview. Dan, just come to you first before you have to dive off, mate. Obviously, Palace coming to St James's. We're on good form. They've just been dumped out the FA Cup. They've got a point to prove. We're looking for six wins on the spin at home. Do you fancy us tonight, mate? Or do you think there's a danger the flip-flops might be on now that we're, we're you, pretty you much know what? I, I, I fancy us again. I mean, Palace have had a really good season. There's no doubt in that. And they've got some really good players. Of course, Conor Gallagher obviously couldn't play at the weekend in the Cup, uh, cup semi-final because, of course, he's on loan from Chelsea. But he's a really good player and will probably come back in tonight. And so I think he's one to watch. Um, obviously Zaha as well, we know what he can do. Uh, obviously they are missing a few, you know, like there's, there's Easy and I forget the other one as well. There's a couple of others that they've got some good players, but are you as well? But you, you, you wouldn't bet against just the way we're playing at home at the moment. I know perhaps our performances aren't, they're not brilliant, they haven't been for the past few games, but somehow we're still grounding, grinding out results, aren't we? You know, obviously, you know, Wolves, Palace, just, um, sorry, Leicester, obviously the last two, haven't played brilliantly, but have gone and won the games and have never looked like as, as much as we haven't played brilliantly, we haven't looked terrible either. And, and obviously, we've, we've made St James's Park a bit of a fortress of late. You know, weren't winning what is it five six in the bounce now? Could make it is it six or seven tonight? I forget, you have to remind me. It's six tonight. If we win tonight, it'll be six, I see, yeah. right? So, yeah, I mean, as I say, with that sort of record, you wouldn't bet against us. And you know, we're, we're on the same points as Palace, quite similar record to them. so we're the, we're the form team, so surely that we would have to be seen as the favourites. So I'm going that night full of confidence, thinking we can get another three points, hit the 40 part, 40 point mark, and then just enjoy the rest of the season, to be honest. So you're going for a win, Dan? What's your prediction, mate? Give us your prediction before you have to fly off. With, yeah, I'm going to go with a 3-1 tonight. Oh, bloody hell. Confidence yeah. is flying out of the young man tonight, Di. Absolutely. We're, we're probably going to be a bit more frugal, I think. But, uh... Well, I'll not listen to that bit. I'll, <laughs> I'll let you <laughs> that. Listen, Dan, enjoy the game, mate, as I always. Will. buddy. We'll, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for Cheers jumping on quickly, soon. man. You have a Ta-ra. good night. Cheers, pal. Thanks, Dan. Okay, now the old bastards are here. Let's have a gripe about that. Tell them how crazy he is for being so positive. <laughs> I just, <laughs> um, I, I, I don't think he's crazy necessarily, but no, I, I, I do bad. think we are. I think we're two very similar teams. Can be a bit inconsistent, and they've had some good results. Drew nil nil with Man City not so long ago, but equally lost to Leicester a couple of weeks ago as well. So they are a bit of a mixed team, and I, and I see a lot of us in them as well, team who are trying to change the way they play, trying to be more progressive and play football like they are under Vieira, but also have got some match winners in the squad as well, some real talent. Um, so I think it's going to be quite a balanced match. I think it's going to be quite open. I think it's going to be a 2-2 draw, is my prediction, but I think it'll be an entertaining game, and I think we're at a point of the season now where realistically both teams know they've got nothing to play for in terms of the league position, but I do think there will be people, certainly from our side, who are trying to prove themselves and trying to kind of keep themselves in and around the squad for next year. They're maybe playing for their position a little bit. So I think as a consequence, it'll still be a kind of a, a full blood performance from us, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I agree with you, mate. I mean, I think, you know, Shelby's been doing this interview, he's been going, you know, doing the rounds on social yeah. media. And you, you can see there is players who are keen to be part of this project, one of the better word moving forward. So they have got something to show. You know, and, and as we said there just before, talking about Willick and Bruno, Shelby, Joe Linton, you know, those four don't go in a three. So they're going to show every chance they get that you know, they deserve to be in that three. And then they also deserve to be here next season. The likes of Almiron, I, I think it's no coincidence his performances have picked up a bit. You know, he's either looking for a good move in the summer or he's wanting to show how that he's worth keeping around, either or. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I think we're both very similar sides. Palace have had a great season. I think Vieira's 
you know, transformed them really in terms of all the players that went and the ones that came in and, and a different mentality. They've got some very good players. I like Conor Gallagher a lot. I think he's very busy in the midfield. And I think Joe Linton will have to be on top of his game to keep a hold of him. And same with Bruno as well. So I, I'm going to go for a draw too. I'm going to go ones each. I think it'll be a, a steady way draw. I think we'll cancel each other out. You know, and I think it'll be a good game. I think it'll probably be a better game than the Leicester one because I think, as you said, both sides don't really have a lot to play for, so to speak. So I think there'll be a bit of freedom in the game. So I think uh, I think both teams will, will, will put a good shift in and there'll be ones each, I think. Mate. Yeah, I, I can see that. I think you're right. I think this is the sort of game where we might come out a little bit as well. I think we've had to play a certain way, which fits the way that Howe wants to play, but we've still needed to be focused on being resolute at the back as priority number one, I think. And now we've kind of crept across that line. We've got a few... I don't want to say dodgy wins because it makes it sound like we were lucky where we've kind of ground things out. But, you know, they've not been thrilling watches, shall we say. But I, I do think that now we're in a position where we can kind of, especially like against a team like Palace, open those doors a little bit and kind of be a bit more attacking and, and see what comes out. I, my final thing that does give me a bit of confidence that Dan might be right is that that's their season over now. Losing that semi-final is their season over. I wonder if it might just let the air out of them a little bit because they haven't really got anything else to play for now. Like I said, they're, they've, you know, this is after their, their big moments, if you like, and, and everyone's going to be a bit down. So I do wonder if there's an element of that. Um, and hopefully, you know, like Mike's saying there, we can, you know, have a, a big home atmosphere. I know that War Flags are doing another big presentation tonight. So yeah, may, maybe Dan's not so crazy after all, but I still think it'll be a, a high score draw. Absolutely, but you can't blame the fans for having this new fan conference. Like I say, it was the it was a stark change from the last game I went to, and you, and you could just feel it. And it's 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 just great to see. It's it's great to be part of again, mate. So so that that's the present we're talking about now. Just let's have a little look about the future. So nobody's um, surprised. Perfect. Yeah, look, perfect link, isn't it, mate? I'm getting back from the the previous gaff of the intro <laughs> out anyway. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so you know, it, it's going through um, the rounds on social media. We've all seen it. We've all been keeping an eye on. Ellie Anderson at Bristol Rovers. We always watch loan players, don't we? We always want them to do well. We yeah. will them to do well. Quite often, the loan deals have been a bit shady. I think Sholos took a lot of flack, but but this one with Ellie Anderson looks absolutely fantastic. That Joey Barton's gone to Bristol Rovers. He's performed so well. Mark bashed up a, a lovely slide here. Mark was going to be on today, but he got struck down by kiddy flu. Bless him. So he's uh, he's had to take the take the night off. But um, he's bashed the slides together as he always does superbly well. And you can see there, just I mean, the heat maps. What catches my eye there? Die that the lad is yeah. everywhere, but Mark's put yeah. some of his strengths on there. I mean, he's you know, he's got five goals, three assists. I mean, the, the lad's been for a sensation, hasn't he? The Bristol Rovers fans have fell in love with him, haven't they? Yeah, I, I think he's got a huge amount of potential for sure. And I think it's going to be so interesting to see how he continues to develop next year and in the future because it's only really the last few games that he's really kind of lit on fire, if you want, in terms of what he's alive. contributing. Yeah. So, and that's just natural. That's going to take him time to settle in. He's a young lad, settle into a new squad, um, a new group of lads. So the fact that he's now finally, you know, getting getting going is is, is really interesting to show what he's capable of. I do, my thing with all of these things, I, I feel like I'm always a miserable one, but my thing with all of these type of lads is I do worry sometimes we were so desperate as fans for them to do well. You know, the lad scored a great goal on the weekend, but he did do it in League Two. And I, I just don't want us to heap too much pressure on him because there's definite potential there. there. There really, really is. But we thought that about Matty, Matty Longstaff. And, and I still think there's potential there 100%. But that's kind of dissipated a little bit. And I and I don't want there to be too much pressure on the lad. So that he comes back, He's we're all going to be saying he's going to be this number 10 that's going to be part of our revolution more if, moving forward, blah, blah, blah. And then he doesn't do it for a couple of games. We're like, bloody hell, he's shit. Da, da, da. So I, I, just, I, want, I, I just think it's important we give him a... Uh, you know, we're a bit more level-headed with him, I guess. I uh, I know we are prone to hyperbole here on the uh, on the Evermore podcast. So, with, without James being here, I suppose we can be a bit more sensible. You know, not not with those two here, mate. It's it's calmer tonight. It's more pragmatic tonight with you and I here. I think, mate. But but yeah, that, it, it's interesting. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of the lad. You know, I remember when he came on as a cameo in the FA Cup. He just he looked like he, a real player. He had pace. He was brave on the ball. He was willing to make right. runs. Uh, it, it, yeah, direct, as you rightly say. You know, we, we were getting pasted anyway, comfortably beaten by a superior Arsenal team. And the Baron of Bacon was just pulling that lost face on the sideline as always. But um, how's he doing, by the way? Oh, yeah, here we go. But uh, yeah, I mean, Anderson looked really good. 
you know, we were all disappointed when he, you know, he went back into cryostasis like Matty Longstaff as well. But yeah. you're right, sometimes you can get a little bit carried away. You know, I think I said he, he had the touch of the Gerrards about him. And I'm not saying he's going to be a Stephen Gerrard, but he... Yeah, like you, know, you said, mate, be level-headed. That's what we need to be, level-headed. <laughs> I was say, yeah. but, but I think that he, he's got a lovely clean strike of the ball. You know, he, he runs at players. He's not scared. And Gerard was very like that when he was younger. He was also a maniac and, and tried to half people every week, as, as some people have forgotten. So hopefully Anderson doesn't develop that trait as well. But but yeah, it's exciting. I mean, when you look at our squad, I mean, I look at Miggy and, you know, Miggy and Anderson for me would be fighting for the similar position. And yeah, doing it in League Two is one thing. If you put Miggy Almer on in League Two, he might have like, you know, Maradona or bloody Messi or something. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So it's, it's hard to say that Anderson's going to come and take Miggy's space. But there's been a lot of people quite keen to keep Miggy for next season. I personally think Miggy's um, shot as shot as load, really. I don't think he's going to get any better at Newcastle. I think we'll see what we can see from Miggy. I know everyone is living in the, the hope that Eddie Howe can do with Miggy what he's done with Joe Linton and maybe a little bit of a craft recently. But I think you've got to look at a plan for the future now. Normally, you would say go buy a player to replace Miggy, but if, if Anderson comes back in pre season and he and he shows that that loan has, has developed them as a player, you know, then you, you've got to consider keeping him around, die, haven't you? Yeah, I, I mean, he should definitely be kept around. And I, I think I'm right in saying that he wouldn't take up a squad place because he counts as a homegrown player. So right, there's, yeah. there's that element to it. My only thing I would say about someone at this age is that if you aren't playing regular football and you're getting five minutes here and there, then is it worthwhile? I think, personally, I think it would be great to go and see him do uh, something at a championship club mm. and see if he can really make Up an impact level. there. Yeah, because absolutely. Let's, let's not forget, we don't just need him to jump straight in straight away. I think yeah. there's 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 options for him, there's space for him to do something somewhere else. And, you know, you look at, you look at I know Chelsea, for example, have got a really, a really massively, unnecessarily massive squad. But there are players who are learning their craft at high levels elsewhere. Liverpool have been quite good at doing that as well. Obviously, my my Welsh friends, Nico Williams and uh, and Harry Wilson got promoted last night. And they've been part of that Liverpool loan system in the past. Obviously, Wilson there permanently now. But again, they're, they're honing their craft somewhere else. And we've got to remember that as well. It's not Newcastle or bust. And I, you know, I think he's definitely needs a chance somewhere if it's with us and he's good enough to do it with us next year happy days and if he's not and he needs a, a year somewhere else i think that's great too i just don't think we need to force him into the to the squad just because we you know as as fans kind of want him if that makes sense mike's saying there if they're good enough age doesn't matter it's not about the age for me to be honest it's more about the experience i think the jump up of, of premier league football again i'd use i'd use matty longstaff as the example there where he came in and he hit the ground running, and everyone's like, bloody hell, this guy's a real player. And I still I still rate him. But to be consistent, you've got to be used to it physically and mentally. And there's there's a lot that goes with that. So yeah. And I, and do you know what? As a as as a Welshman, I can definitely uh, I would definitely like to see uh, and Anderson at Swansea. I think that'd be fun. I was gonna say I saw that come up. I had to pull that one up for you, especially, babe. But uh, we've got another shout for uh, for Blackburn there. So well, that'd be a great shout. I think it did Harvey Elliott the world of good, didn't it? When he was at Liverpool yeah. as well. So I think you've got to pick the right low move. And, and you know, credit has to go to Joey Barton, as crazy as he is. You know, he's uh, you know, he's he's obviously getting the best out of, of Anderson, which is brilliant. So just move on to the, the last section of the night, mate. Tune transfer talk. You know, we've been linked to a hell of a lot of players um, over the last few weeks and months, and we always will be, I think, in this new crazy world of Newcastle United that we, we've gone from not being able to get bloody Chowdhury over the line to being, <laughs> being linked with every man and his dog. So I love it every single day. I look at the link on Twitter. It's it's incredible. But but it's no secret that we need a centre-forward. That seems to be the priority for the, the new owners. There's been two linked in particular. One's a massive yes for me. One's a massive no. Die. I'll get your opinion in a second. Start with a massive yes. Is this man, Darwin Nunes? Um, we all know about him. He, he looked very, very good against Liverpool in the Champions League. You know, he's 22 years old. He's got 31 goals and 27 appearances, four assists. Mark's pulled out some of his strengths there. Dribbling, finishing key passes, likes to cut inside. Eight goals and two assists in his last six games. You can see from the heat map there, he's very, very busy. He looks a hell of a player. And according to Jurgen Klopp, a very good looking man. So uh, he ticks both boxes, I suppose, mate. How do you feel about Nunes, mate? Would you be pleased? Uh, looks wise, or just generally, mate. I, I, uh, <laughs> well, I suppose you can give a you can give a is he hot or is he not rating if you want to. It's up I mean, to you, mate. Yeah. I mean, he's better looking than you and me, but I feel like that's a low bar to be perfectly it's honest. Little, little bit than you, mate. I don't know. I don't know if that'd be enough. <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's saying, um, for your money. I think when I was thinking about how we what we were going to talk about today and how this was going to go, 
I think when you look back at a lot of teams who've been spending money and the, the, the things that have helped them go to that next step have always been a centre forward. And I don't want to say this come from nowhere, but to an extent, there's an element of gambling take, you know, going on. And I'd look at, let's say, Suarez. Liverpool needed that one kind of magic person. And he was that man who kind of lit that spark in them and took them on to the next level, um, where they obviously almost won the league. In the same way that, you know, you know, he's come from a he was he came from the Dutch league. Uh, Suarez, he wasn't you know in a big league. In the same way that Nunes is, is obviously not in a hugely successful or dominant league in Portugal. Um, I would even say the same as Aguero to an extent, in that he came across from uh, Atletico when they weren't at the peak of their powers, and he made a massive difference for City. And I think that's the kind of player we need because right now we're obviously not going to get a Haaland or a Kane, and you know that'd be crazy. So uh, I think this is the sort of person that we need. And I really hope that we can get him, whether we will or not. I remain unconvinced, but his goals record is absolutely phenomenal. I would absolutely love to see the boy playing in black and white. It, it, it reminds me a lot of the uh, the Bruno transfer, really, where you know we 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 had no chance of getting this guy, but the Bruno transfer was relatively under the radar. It only came to light when we kind of had the deal done. Do you know what I mean? So it's um, <clears throat> I think to be fair, it's. Um, it's a hell of a name to be linked with us yet again. And he is a, a fantastic player. Like you say, he's got ability. He's got everything in his locker. But I think um, there's going to be a, a, a massive string of clubs after this guy that can offer him Champions League football, yeah. can offer him, you know, maybe no disrespect to Eddie Howe, more bigger name managers. I mean, I think after the Liverpool game, Jurgen Klopp might even look at him and think, do you know what, do I upgrade him for Mino or something like that? You've got Madrid, you've got Barca, you've got all these other teams who will start looking at these guys. And if we were able to get him over the line, that infamous line under the Pardew years, which is hopefully now a distant memory. But if we could get a player like that over the line, I mean, we'd have a hell of a footballer on our hands. We love Callum Wilson. There's no doubt about that. But he's only fit 60% of the season. So you need a you need a front man, you need a focal point of this team that can can be fitter for longer than that. And I think Nunes could be that man. Um, another player who has been linked, which for me is a no, just a little segue into that, is former Newcastle United uh, youth team player Ivan Tony. Now he's had an unbelievable season at Brentford. You can see there, twenty nine appearances, fourteen goals, five assists. Key strengths, you know, when he's strong as an ox, decent finisher. For me, Di, I think he's had one of those seasons, right or wrong, where he's had a really good first season in the Premier League. I think his second season syndrome will kick in. And for me, I don't think he'll be anywhere near as good next season. And just to throw another one in there with my tin hat on, I think he's got a bad attitude, mate. What do you think about Tony? I, I agree with everything you said there pretty much. I think he has got a bad attitude. I, I, I think we're talking about different levels of player there. I think the reality will be we'll probably get someone in between. I think if we'd have signed him instead of Wood, for example, this year, to be that kind of big physical focal point, it wouldn't have been my top choice, but I would have gone with it in the same way that, you know, Wood is not our top choice, but we've had to go with it because of what he provides for us. I think Nunes is a very different player and you can see from the heat map there, I don't know if you can chuck that back up, but if you look at the heat map there, a lot of Nunes was coming in from out, out wide and look at where all those the, the red the more red dots are coming in from out wide and making a difference on the the left hand side of the box. You look at Tony and those big red dots are much much deeper. You're getting a different player there. You're getting someone who's going to drop in and, and needs people playing off him. Well, actually, yeah. that might actually work for us in a weird way because that's what <laughs> that's what we want to play. So the, my point is, do I want him? No. Do I think he's got a bad attitude? I think he has. But if this is the way we want to play, where we do want someone who's going to hold the ball up and drop a little bit deeper and have players running off him, well, actually, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the end of the world because I would say if we got Nunes, him and uh, St. Max, you know, maybe looking at those heat maps, maybe want to play in the same sort of areas. So, you know, I'm not I'm not saying I would say no to him just to appease St. Max, but I think my point ultimately is that we've got to be careful about the sort of player we want and what the, what sort of role we want them to do. I, I think. In that instance, there, I don't think we're comparing. I think apples and oranges is that the is that the expression? <laughs> apples for apples, I don't know. Mate. It's apples. some kind of fruit, no matter what it is. Yeah, you're getting some vitamins and minerals yeah. into your system. But I'm pretty sure yeah, both yeah. of these boys eat plenty of apples and oranges by I the size of the bear. Yeah. It, it would be good. Now you're right. I mean, it's um, it's such a shame that we're talking about the need for a striker because I, we, we all love Wilson on the Evermore. 
podcast. I think all Newcastle fans love Wilson. But I was saying this a few months ago. That I think Wilson either, either has to adapt his game so he doesn't keep getting these niggly injuries, which I'm not sure he will because he seems like he's quite adamant into how he plays. Or, you know, we have to get another player that can, you know, play either ahead of him or alongside him. And to me, I think Nunes ticks that box because he... He, he, he throws a bit of the Berbatov out to me that he's got that touch, he's got that, you know, he's got that kind of ability to just slow the play down, look, slip a pass, you know, through to his his fellow striker or his fellow front man. You know, so for me, Nunes out of those two would, would be a better fit to, to potentially have Wilson alongside him. But if you're going to have a one-man focal point, as you rightly say, yeah. Tony might be better. Peaches and plums <laughs> for Nunes and Tony. Yeah, well, yeah. I do like that, I do like that. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I think the reality is we're not quite there to be going after, to getting a Nunes type person yet. I think is a reality. I think he will end up going somewhere else. And the other thing that was me in terms of us recruiting a good level striker is that it seems like Haaland's on the move. I don't know what impact that might have for Kane, let's say, but maybe Spurs and Dortmund are looking for a replacement for them. You know, if you're Nunes, are you picking Newcastle or are you are you are you going to Borussia Dortmund? Well, really, I don't think there's much of a choice. So actually, I think the reality will be we're just that one step down there. We're not there yet. And I think the reality is we're going to be looking at someone who's that one step from there. And I and I would love to give you the answer because I can see the look on your face. You can ask me what sort of person I'm thinking. I don't know. But I, w- I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that I to you. I, 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 that's that the sort of system we're after. Do you, do you know the one the one I would say, and I would take the gamble on him and tell him he's going to be our starter and go for him every week, and it's what happens, would be Divock Origi. I, I really, really rate him. I think he's good big, show. strong, quick, physical, good finisher. And is he going to be the person who's going to lead us into our new era and get the goals as season, maybe? I'd He's, he looked uh, and, and Charles Bird. So I, I do think that there's real there's real potential. Uh, that's what I would do. If so, Liverpool have got Mane, sorry. So we're good. No, just just lo- just losing you a little bit down the Wi-Fi, mate. I don't know if it's okay at your end, but you you, you talk you, you're totally right about um, about a regain, mate. In, in my opinion, I think we should have went from in January. I was quite disappointed that we didn't. To be fair, I thought Chris would. Oh, you're you're back now, mate. You're a bit clear now. You went a bit Android there, but uh, but yeah, I think uh, Origi would have been a good sign in, in January. I think he has more movement, and I think he's a better player than Wood. Um, but yeah, it, it it's one of them, mate. I think in the summer, Woody, you know, Woody. Um, <laughs> Woody, we've gone all world. <laughs> you got a comment there from Jack. We've gone all world service because <laughs> your Wi Fi has gone the blink. Die. I don't know if you'd still hear us, mate, if you've gone all frozen there. But yeah, I think Origi would have been a fantastic sign. Oh, you're back, mate. Are you back? I'm back. There we go. You're back, <laughs> you're back in the room. That's a, between your broadband and my silly cat meowing in the background, mate, we're having a great show, aren't we? The wonders <laughs> of doing a podcast on YouTube. But, exactly. but yeah, so I think you're right, mate. You know, you know, people like Spurs offering London for these guys as well. There's always that draw. You know, so it, it, it is a tricky one, mate. But I think Origi would be a great show. And we'll have to see whether... You know, Liverpool would be looking to maybe um, trade in him in the in the summer if if they get better players. But but that's pretty much us wrapped yeah. up for this week, mate. Thank you so much, Di, for joining us. It's been great having you back. It's lovely to have the Welsh Wizard on the podcast again, and uh, we'll be, be back, back next good week, I'm back. sure. Yeah, fantastic. Mate. We'll be back next show for, uh, next week. Sorry, with a, with a with a back four as always. Hopefully, there's no more midweek games. If you've just joined us for the first time now, please remember to click like and subscribe. I'm not blocking Dai's face this time. You can see his handsome face above the, the bar there, which is brilliant. We should have got Dan back in and blocked him off on that <laughs> one. But, <laughs> but yeah, so the channel's growing every time. We you know we love having new listeners on board. Please make sure you, you click that like and subscribe. You know, we've got Jack in the comments there. Thanks a lot, Jack. We hope you enjoyed the show, mate. Really appreciate the love in the comments. And trolls there. If we buy the week, I'd be so annoyed because he can't play 90 minutes. Well, neither can Wilson by the looks of it these days, mate. Yeah, so exactly. he might just uh, fit in quite well in our squad. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, for, for me and Di and the rest of the lads, thank you so much for tuning in. Let's keep supporting that team of Coy United. Let's hope we get three points tonight. How are the lads? How are you?